Good afternoon, I'm Nicolas Rougier, and today I would like to present some of the experiments I've made with Emacs. My initial motivation was an inner feeling that something was wrong with most modern editors, and before I show you my experiment, I will try to demonstrate what I think is wrong. Note that this is mostly my personal feelings, and I did not conduct any experiment to test if this or that choice would be better. Of course, some of you might legitimately disagree with me. Let's start with a short review of a modern text editor. I chose another editor that is only available on OS X, but there are actually many other very similar editors, such as, for example, Atom, Sublime Text, or Visual Studio. Now it's quite interesting because I think it manages to gather everything that is wrong in this single screenshot that is also the teaser image on their website. So let me now review it according to my personal biases, and for further analysis, I can only recommend to attend David Wilson talks tomorrow. The most annoying thing that really bothers me is, uh, uh, is the actual area dedicated to the editing. When you measure this editing area, as I did on the screenshot, you find an impressive 35%, which is ridiculously, ridiculously small compared to the side of the window. This means that two-thirds of the window area is dedicated to peripheral, peripheral information that you don't look so often when writing code or prose. This results in the main editing area to be reduced to one-third. Even if we turn to have larger and larger monitors, I think this is wrong to lose so much space. If we now look closer at this peripheral information, we can immediately see that there is a lot of redundancy. For example, on the screenshot, I highlighted the information related to the file name being edited. Unless I missed some, this file name is displayed four times. This is way too much, even if it displayed for different reasons in different contexts. But still, I think you have a design problem if you need to repeat an information up to four times. If we now look at colors, we can count 15 different colors, such that it is impossible to guess which color indicates what. Such colorization based on syntax is actually quite widespread in code editors, including Emacs, unfortunately. The problem is that we still don't know whether it helps or not. Some studies say yes, some others say no, and in the end, the conclusion is not yet certain. Furthermore, there is another problem because there is no scientific method on how to enforce colorization. Should it be based on syntax, or semantic, or context, or something else? Developers are actually pretty free to do whatever they want, and a lot of them will use syntax-based colorization because it is the most simple to, uh, to write. In the end, most of them achieve a Christmas tree effect. We know, however, how to use colors to drag attention to a specific position as it is, sh as it is shown on the screenshot. This is called the pop-out effect, which is quite well known in neuroscience. Here, the media keyword has been made very silent just by setting uh, the color in red, while all other elements are desaturated. It literally pops out from the screen and points attention toward it. Finally, if we look at the overall structure of the Nova Editor, we can characterize structural elements that are also present in a large number of modern editors, namely a file browser, a gutter, a minimap, a tab bar, a toolbar, and some versioning tools. I think this is too much information and can lead to cognitive overload such that you end up to not pay attention to important information. Say differently, more is not always better. And to paraphrase Edward Tufte in his book The Visual Display of Quantitative Information, above all else, show the data. This is the reason that led me to experiment alternative design, and of course, to do that with the total freedom, I didn't have much choice but to use an hacked Emacs. My first iteration was called Elegant Emacs, and I tried to enforce a few principles that I will uh, detail in the next slide. But roughly, my, my idea was to enforce a radically different design by simply removing as much information as I could, even though vanilla Emacs is already quite simple. You can see the result on the screen, and I'm particularly happy with the third screenshot that mimics the PDF layout of a scientific article by Stefan Monnier and Michael Spieber, but rendered fully inside Emacs. 
The second iteration is called Nano Emacs, and it is a version I try to maintain with a set of standalone packages that you can test uh, individually. It is based on a set of a few principles, uh, namely large margins, reduced number of faces, a simplified and contextual header line, and a default aspect ratio that mimics the A4 ISO format. I've been using this layer layout for a year, and so far I'm quite happy with it. I know this is quite an opinionated design, and some of you may totally disagree with me. Lately, I've been experimenting, experimenting with some special modes where the header line is even, made even simpler. This is the case for org agenda, mu for e, depth, and lfib. This works reasonably well because our, this mode are search based, and it was easy to unify their, their design. Uh, I've also integrated some dynamic tags and icons in my agenda using SVG lib, which is available on Elpa. And for example, you can see the uh, pi progress that uh, helps to uh, show the, uh, some incoming deadlines. There are still ongoing development to develop new packages to give a, a unified look and feel. I got a lot of feedback from the Emacs, uh, Emacs community, mostly in Reddit and GitHub, and I would like to thank them here because this is incredibly useful. If you want to follow or support my work, best place is probably GitHub. Uh, thank you for your attention. I will be happy to answer any question you may have.